The Life and Legacy of Rembrandt by Flora On. The purpose of this video is to inform my viewers maximum knowledge about Rembrandt, a Dutch artist during the 16th century. This video will consist of information about Rembrandt and his style of art as well as his accomplishments with some examples. Rembrandt's full name is Rembrandt Hermsen van Rijn. He was born in Leiden, Netherlands, July 15, 1606. Unfortunately, he has passed away in Amsterdam, Netherlands, October 4, 1669. He is known for his self-portraits and biblical scenes. He was taught to be an artist by two different painters. The first was Jacob van Swamber, with whom he studied for about three years. Under Juan Swanberg, Rembrandt would have learned basic artistic skills which influenced him with scenes of hell and the underworld and its ability to paint fire and the way it, its light reflects on surrounding objects. His second teacher was Amsterdam's Peter Lastman, who was a well-known history painter and likely helped Rembrandt master the genre which included placing figures from biblical, historical, and allegorical scenes in complex settings. All the skills he learned from both painters allowed him to create paintings that had itching and use of shadow and light. Rembrandt is known for his style of baroque, which is often characterized by exaggerated motion and clear detail used to produce drama, exuberance, and grandeur. This is relating to or denoting a style of European architecture, music, and art of the 17th and 18th centuries that allowed mannerism and is characterized by ornate detail. Baroque came to English from a French word meaning irregularly shaped, which you can see in all of Rembrandt's paintings. This is one of Rembrandt's most famous paintings. It was painted in 1632 and the name of this piece is called The Anatomy Lesson of Dr. Tilt. This painting was Rembrandt's first important commission for a group portrait and it may have been one of the reasons of his moving to Amsterdam. The painting illustrates Dr. Tulp and his listeners, all of them portrayed at close range, now exist in a convincing atmospheric space with Rembrandt accomplishes through Carol Oscuro and we perceive fully the contrast between the tones of the corpse and the vivid colors of the physicians who follow the lecture's demonstration with various degrees of attentiveness. The whole scene is intense and dramatic, and the action of lecturing is presented so strikingly that more portraiture recedes in importance. Dr. Tulp's hands are in the brightest light, one lifts a strand of muscle with a scalp, while the other performs an explanatory gist gesture. This results in a new focus of interest, since the dark red muscles stand out against the colors of the corpse. how Rembrandt subordinates everything to his main theme. Instead of the overall dark mass, the physician's clothes are now varied but still subdued in color. As a result, the linear pattern of this group, the classical triangular composition, lo loses much of its insistence so that it impresses us only as a living contrast to the strongest colors, the red of the muscle and the central area. I specifically chose this piece of art to give as an example because I believe that this piece of art that Rembrandt painted showed off all his skills. I chose the self-portrait painted about 1626 as my second example of Rembrandt's famous styles of art. As I mentioned before, the skills he learned from von Swaff is expressed in this art piece. Rembrandt himself must have highly appreciated the demonic power and picturesque reality of this study of a man looking out from the shadow for as late as 1634, he had it reproduced and circulated as an itching by Joris von Bittlin. Anyone who wishes to understand the significance of color in Rembrandt will do well to compare von Bittlin's black and white engraving with this painting. In order to see how much of the spirit of the original is lost when color, light, and shadow in all their vitality are transformed into monochrome tones and the color for its luminous hues is no longer present. There are a lot of other artworks that Rembrandt is known for. Some of the sources that I use is Rembrandt by Christopher Baker 
and Rembrandt's Eyes by Simon Schama. My my three internet assignments came from Smart History, Biography.com, and Smithsonian.com. The last source that I use is a journal from ResearchGate.net. This is one of my favorite Rembrandt's work. It is called Flora. It was painted in 1655 on oil on canvas. It is showcased in the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. Thank you for watching!